Hello everyone, welcome back to the cooking simulator tutorial. In this episode, we will be adding timers to our ordering system. If you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase the assets from the video by link in the description. And you will be able to use them in all your projects. Let's get started. First open the RSI BP. Add a new variable called required time to cook. Make this variable public and set the default value to 20. Next let's create a blueprint class for orders. Open the blueprints orders folder and create a new blueprint inherited from the object class. Name it BP order. Now open BP order and add a variable called recipe of type drecipe.bp. Set this variable to expose on spawn and instance editable. Next create a custom event named activate order. Inside this event call set timer by function name. For the function name create a variable called main timer function name. And set the default value to main timer finished. Now create a custom event with the same name as the value of main timer function name, which means the event should be named main time finished. For the time input in set timer by function name, set it to the required time to cook of the recipe. Next, let's add three event dispatches. Each will have one input, named order of type BP order. The first dispatcher will be on main time finished. The second one will be on order failed. And the third will be on order finished. Inside the main timer finished event, call the on main time finished dispatcher. For the order input, set self. Next, call set timer by event. Previously we used set timer by function name because some features aren't available in the object class when we set in timer by event. However, for this timer I won't be using those features, so I can go with my preferred approach. For the time, set it to 5 seconds. This will give the player 5 seconds warning after the main timer finishes, letting them know that time is almost up. For the event, use create event. And create a matching event named time expired. Inside time expired, Call the on order failed dispatcher. Then unbind all dispatches to clean up. Finally, cap the unbinding logic into a function called unbind all dispatches. We created the features for tracking time and notifying the player when time expires. But right now we don't have a way to finish an order. Let's fix that by creating a new function called try finish. This function should have an input named ingredients, which is mapped with dafoodietmbp as a key. And bps recipe ingredient as a value. And it should also have a boolean output named finished. A 
at the start of the function, call compare on the recipe to check if the given ingredients match the required ones. If the comparison returns false, return the false immediately. If the comparison returns true, to notify that the order is completed. After that, call unbind all dispatches to clean up. Finally, return true to indicate that the order was successfully finished. We also need to prepare some debugging information to display as text. Let's create a new function called toText. This function should have a text output and be marked as pew, so it doesn't modify any data. For the text, use format text. We will display the name of recipe and the remaining time in brackets. For the name, use the display name of the recipe. For time, for time, call get time or remaining time by function name and use main time or function name as a function name. Next, let's open BP Order Manager and change the task variable type to BP Order Array. Now create a function called init task. This function should take a recipe as input and return an order as output. Inside the function call construct object from class and use BP order as a class to construct a new order. Before binding the order dispatches, go back to the event graph and create three new events. And create three new events. All the main timer finished. With an order as input. Order failed. With an order as input. And order finished. With an order as input too. Now return to the init task function. Bind all dispatches of the order to their corresponding events using the create event node. Finally call activate order to start the timer of the order. And return the created order as a function output. Next let's fix the functions and events. First open print tasks. Here we need to loop through tasks using for each. We need to break the existing connections to the array and array element. Now set tasks as a new array. For the text format name, set the result of array element to text. Next open the event graph. Inside add tasks, remove the old task node and add it again to refresh the reference. Now when we add in a new task, we need to call init task for its input set a random recipe. 
and then take the result and add it to the tasks array. Next open try finish task. Since the array type has changed, drop the existing array and array element connections. Now connect tasks to the array. And inside the loop, call try finish on each array element. If the function returns true, meaning the task is finished, simply break the loop. Okay. Lastly, let's redo the finished task event. First, remove everything expect for the timer logic. Also, remove the input. Then rename this event to start a timer if needed. Okay, now the only thing left is implementing the order event listeners. For order main time finished, simply print the order's recipe name on the screen in yellow to indicate the timer has expired. For order failed, Print the order recipe name in red color. Then remove the order from the tasks array. After that call start a timer if needed. For order finished. Print the order's recipe name in green to indicate a successful completion. Then remove the order from tasks and call start a timer if needed. Now let's test everything. First we will check if orders fail correctly. Since 20 seconds is too short for testing. Let's increase a required time to cook to 100 seconds in the RSI BP. Now cook the proposed dishes and see how it works. Everything works well, thank you for your attention and see you soon!